Welcome back to another A-Level Maths revision video. Today we're going to take a look at some more differentiation and specifically the product rule. So following on from the chain rule, this is kind of like the next intuitive step of um, further differentiation. So the product rule has a look where you have a f basically a function or an equation that can be split into two different functions. So for example here, this question 8, we have the curve C, which has this equation, y equals x plus 3 squared times e to the 3x. Okay, so trying to differentiate this without the product rule is quite a task. So the product rule makes life much easier. So how we do this is we split it up into two unique functions. So doing that, for example, if I pick it out in blue, this would be one function, this x plus 3 squared, and then my other function would be, for example, this e to the 3x like that. Okay, so doing that, uh, put the wrong colour pen. What we do is we write this down as u and v. Okay, now it doesn't matter which one you pick as u and v for the product rule, so you can be as creative as you want. I always kind of go left to right, so my u is my first one, the blue one, so x plus 3 squared, and then my v is e to the 3x. Okay. So now what we do is we differentiate both of these as well. So u prime, so that's the differential of u. Well, this here now requires the chain rule. So this is why you kind of always learn this after the chain rule. It's very common that you will use the chain rule in it. So we bring the 2 down to the front, times it by the derivative of the inside of the bracket, which is just 1, so that'll be a 2, times by the bracket. And then if you still track 1 off the power, it'll just be 1, so we'll just leave it like that. And then my v prime... The derivative of this, nice and easy, the derivative of 3x is just 3, bring it to the front here, so 3e e to the 3x, okay? So now, we've got our u, we've got our u prime, we've got v and we've got v prime, now we can apply the product rule. So the product rule states, to find dy by dx, all we do is, we take u and times it by the derivative of v, and then do the same with v, so take v, times it by the derivative of u, add them together, that's our differential. So if we do that, I'm going to get u times v prime. So if I write that in full, it's u v prime plus v u prime like that. So I'll write it down just for this question, but with enough practice, you'll kind of just start flying through this. So u times v, uh, v prime, so that's going to be 3e to the 3x times by uh, x. Sorry, so that should be an x x plus 3 squared and then we add v which is e to the 3x times this so that would be 2e to the 3x like so times by x plus 3 and notice this is just our answer now for the, the differential dy by dx okay so that's just dy by dx we can't simplify that really any further at this point here um, we could factorise out if we want but for now I'm just going to leave it like this you don't have to um, that's kind of up to you. If it asks for you to simplify it fully, then make sure you do um, factor out. And then for part B, so that was part A. For part B, it wants us to find the gradient of C. Um, so remember to find the gradient of C, well, that's just why we've differentiated, because remember the, the differential dy by dx allows us to work out the gradient given a coordinate at x. So this is dy by dx. If we know x is 2, all we do is sub it into this. So, 3e e to the 3x, so that'll be 3e e to the 6, times by x plus 3, when x is 2, so that's 5 squared, so that's 25, so that was 5 squared, plus 2e, e, again, 3x, so that'd be 6, times by 5 there, because 2 plus 3 is 5. And all we've got to do here now is just simplify, so, 3e e to the 6 times 25, well, that'll be 75e e to the 6, like so. And then this 2e e to the 6 times 5, that'll give me 10e e to the 6, like so. And then at this point here, this is just, you know, simplifying 75e e to the 6 plus 10e e to the 6, or we'll just collect like terms, 85e e to the 6 there. <clears throat> so that gives us the answer there, so 85e e to the 6. You can, if you want, write it as a 
a numerical answer um, if you want. But this is the exact solution here, 85e to the 6. And that gets you three marks for part B, and our three marks for part A is there. So that's three for that, and three for that. So nice easy start there. Let's take another a look at another similar question. Um, again, just practicing the actual basics of uh, the product rule. So y is equal to x to the 5 times the square root of 10x plus 6. Like we mentioned in the very first differentiation video, when you start seeing square roots, or cube roots for example, write this in index notation. So remember, square roots is the power of a half. So this is x to the 5 times 10x plus 6 to the power of a half. Like so. Okay, so using this information now, we've got our y just rewritten. Like we do, we split this up now into two functions. So, one of them, u. Again, I'm going from left to right, that'll be my x to the 5. And then my v will be 10x plus 6 to the power of a half. Okay, like we always do, differentiate u, differentiate v, and then we can apply the product rule. So this is kind of a good thing about um, the product rule. It's very kind of um, methodical. It always follows the same pattern. So as long as you can get the basics down, you'll start finding this quite nice and easy. So differentiating this, this will just give us 5x to the 4. Differentiating this, so this is a little bit more uh, complicated just due to the fact that we have to apply the chain rule. So bring your half to the front, so that would be a half, and then times that by the derivative of the inside here. Well, the derivative of 10x plus 6 is just 10, so that's half of 10, which is 5. Okay, so that's the constant on the outside. Times by 10x plus 6. So the inside of the bracket doesn't change. But remember, the power has to change as well. We subtract 1 from it. So a half minus 1 will just give us minus a half there. Okay. So we've got u, we've got u prime, we've got v, and we've got v prime. So we can now apply um, the product rule. So remember, u times v prime is so what that gives us dy by dx is 5x to the 5 times 10x plus 6 to the minus a half plus, so again, take v times it by u prime, so that's 5x to the 4 times 10x plus 6 to the power of a half. And here now, we've got dy by dx. But the question wants to know um, what the value of the gradient is um, when x is 1. So, when x is 1, all that simply means is we have to just substitute into here, okay? So, that would be 5 times 1 to the 5, which is just 1, right? So, 5 times 1 is 5. That's 5. 10 times 1 is 10, plus 6. That's 16 to the minus a half. Same procedure here, 5 times x to the 4, well that's just, when x is 1, that's just 5. Again, 16, but this time to the half. So, simplifying again here, making life a bit easier. This is 5 times 1 over the square root of 16, so that's 5 over the square root of 16. Square root of 16 here is 4, so that's 5, you know, 5 times uh, the square root of 16, which is 4. But I'm going to write it as just 5 lots of root 16 here. For this one, with it being 5 over root 16, I'm just going to work it out on my calculator. Um, you kind of you want to rationalise and start adding here, but just to make life easy, I'm just going to um, write this out as what it will be on my calculator. So put this on your calculator and you get 21.25 there. Okay. And it's as simple as that, basically. So... Write u, write v, differentiate both, and then just apply the product rule there. Summing in the x coordinate that we're given. So that's that question done. Let's take a look at another one, this time from the review exercise. So similar procedure, part b is slightly different because we want to work out the coordinates of the stationary points of c. Okay. So question 4a. So we're going to use the product rule to find dy by dx. And y is 2x minus 3 squared times e to the 2x. So, just like we would, split this up into two um, different functions. So I'm going to write that as u and v, where u is 
2x minus 3 squared. And then v is e to the 2x. Like so. So now let's differentiate u, let's differentiate v. Differentiating this, again, we need the chain rule. So bring your 2 to the front and then times it by the derivative of the inside. So that's 2 times the derivative of this, which is 2. So 2 times 2 is 4. Reducing 1 from the power, so 2 minus 1 just gives us a power of 1 there. But obviously we don't need to write that power of 1. And then v prime, derivative of 2x is 2. So you bring that down to the front, 2e to the 2x there. Okay, so we've got everything we need. Now let's just use the product rule here. So u times v prime, so that gives me 2e to the 2x times 2x minus 3 squared. And then finally, e to the 2x times uh, u prime, which is 4 bracket 2x minus 3. So that will give us 4e to the 2x. I think I want to sneeze. Ugh, not quite. Phew. There we go. Bless me. 4e to the 2x times 2x minus 3. Okay. I'm feeling a bit better now. So there we go. So that's the product rule. Now that we've got the product rule to find dy by dx, which is this. Now we can find the coordinates of the stationary points of C. Well, remember, for stationary points, that's when dy by dx is equal to zero. So, dy by dx is equal to zero here. So, I'm going to set this equal to zero now. So, if we do that, I'm going to get 2e to the 2x, 2x minus 3 squared, plus 4e. 2x times 2x minus 3. I mean, you can at this point already factorise here, because we can factorise clearly with the 2e to the 2x and my 2x minus 3. But I'm not going to do it just yet. I'm just going to write everything in full. This is equal to 0. Now, to find the coordinates of this stationary point of C, we need to solve this um, with x for x, basically. So solving for x here. Now, it's not particularly easy to see at this point how we'd solve this. But when we're, when we're always trying to solve for x, generally the best solution is to factorise. So we're not going to try and divide by it through anything by here, because we don't want to miss any solutions. So I'm just going to factorise. So I can pull a 2e to the 2x out, because I've got this here, and I've got the 2e to the 2x here. And I can also pull out a 2x minus 3, because we've got that, we've got it squared there, and we've got it to the power of 1 here. So that would be 2e to the 2x. And I can play a 2x minus 3. Like so. And now I've got to consider what else I can pull out here. Or what basically I've got times 2e to 2x times 2x minus 3 by to get the rest of it. Well, dealing with this bit here first, the 4e to 2x. That's the power of 1 for the 2x minus 3. Power of 1 here. But I've got this 2e to 2x here. It's 4e to 2x. So all I've actually got to times that by is 2, right? 2e to 2x times 2x minus 3 times by 2. We get this. So that's that bit done. So give it a tick. And then we've got this bit here. Well, all I've got to times that by is because we've got 2e to 2x, got it there. We're just missing a power of 1. So that means we've just got to times it by itself again. So doing that, that gives us plus 2x minus 3. Like so. This is equal to 0. Now at this stage here, I can simplify this bracket. 2 plus 2x minus 3. Well, that's just going to give us. 2x minus 1 in that bracket. So if I write it all out in full, 2x minus 3, and then 2x uh, minus 1. Okay, and that's equal to 0. So we factorise this really nice. The difficulty here now is just figuring out where we go from here. Well, remember, once you factorise some it and set it equal to 0, all we do now is consider each one individually. So 2e to the 2x equals 0. Well, you can divide through by 2, and you get e to the 2x equals 0. But you should be well aware of the fact that e to the power of x, or 2x, we have no solutions for it when it's equal to 0. So, no solutions for this. Okay, so there's no solutions for that. Let's consider when 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. So quite clearly, this will have a solution. Add 3 to both sides. So 2x is equal to 3. So therefore, x is equal to 3 over 2. 
Okay. And let's just consider the last one when x, uh, 2x minus 1 equals 0. And again, this will have a solution as well. Add 1 to both sides. 2x is equal to 1. And then divide by 2 again. So x is equal to a half. Okay. Now at this stage here, it wants the coordinates of the stationary point. So we've got the x coordinate. We just need to work out the y for each one. So this one, I mean, we haven't done it, but it is technically done because there is no solutions. Let's do that for the x here. So y. Well, all you've got to do is sub your x coordinate here back into your original curve c. Okay, so I haven't actually done that, so I'm going to quickly just do it myself. So 2 times 3 over 2 um, minus 3. And then we times that by e to the... 2x, where x is 3 over 2. So if you do all that on your calculator, what you actually get is that that is 0. Okay, so that coordinate there is 3 over 2, 0 for that one. Just put a bubble around it so we don't lose it. And then let's do it for this one here, where x is a half. And again, it'll probably work out quite nice as an integer. Um, so subbing in x is a half into here. So that's 1 minus 3 squared times it by e to the 2x so that's e to the 1 um, so e to the 1 so that comes out as um, so it doesn't actually come out as an integer that one so what it comes out as is I'll work out in full just so I've got it so that's 1 minus 3 so that gives us um, minus 2 and then we square it and we times it by e to the 1 so what that actually gives us here is Minus 2 squared, so that's 4, so we get 4e here. Okay, so 4e. And I'm just going to quickly double check I've got the first one right. So that's 4e. Just double check it. Yeah, yeah, so it comes out as 0 again because this actual, this 2x minus 3 squared, when x is um, 3 over 2. That becomes zero so obviously it doesn't matter what the e to the 2x is that's just zero so there we have it so then that coordinate there is a half and over e there so there we have it guys that's the end of this video um working through the product we'll hope it's helped um be sure to subscribe and leave any feedback cheers